it's create day my friends welcome to my channel I've got five different types of Easter egg DIYs for you today so let's get started I'm starting off with these wooden eggs and wooden candlesticks that I picked up from Hobby Lobby I'm just going to go ahead and use some Gorilla Wood Glue to attach the eggs to the candlesticks. The eggs have a flat bottom, so it makes gluing these together really easy. I set them aside and I let them dry overnight. I'm using my white chalk paint for these nine paper mache eggs that I have inserted little skewers into the bottom to make it easy to paint. And I can also place those into a styrofoam block so that they can dry. And I'm using the same chalk paint for the eggs that are attached to the candlesticks. I do two coats of the chalk paint and when that is dry I mix in some baking soda with my chalk paint so that I can stipple on some texture onto the candlesticks. I'm using a round brush and just stippling it on there it will create a really grainy texture. Now I'm using my Select Seal Matte Sealer to cover the egg portion because I'm going to be applying some stamps. I'll be using Stazon ink in the color Jet Black and I'm going to use this rooster stamp from the IOD Antiquities collection and then I'm going to use this little bird stamp and then this little bunny. But before I apply those, I want to add some lettering on here. So I'm just using a couple of different scripts stamps. And I'm trying to apply those lightly. So I um, load up the ink and then stamp it onto a paper towel first so that it will go on lighter onto the egg. And I'm just randomly applying these. There's um, no specific way. I just want to get some background onto each of the eggs. In the section that I want to put my main stamp on, either the rooster or the bunny or the bird, I want to make sure that there's not too much of the black ink on that little area. So I take a 320 grit sandpaper and just very lightly sand that back a little bit and ink up my stamp and apply it. This one did not turn out as dark as I would have liked but I didn't feel confident in going back over it again and lining all that up so I just left it as it was and now I'm onto the bird and the same thing it didn't come out dark enough but I decided to just go for it and I did re-stamp it with some more ink to darken it up a little bit and now we're on to the bunny and the third time is the charm this little guy turned out Perfectly. I absolutely love it. This was the look I was going for with all three of those stamps. Mm -hmm. 
Look at that. He's so cute. Oh. I'm going to apply my clear wax onto the candlestick portion, just brushing it on and then wiping it back so that I can apply some black wax and be able to wipe it back without it covering the entire candlestick. So this is the black wax I'm using and I'm going to brush it on into those recessed detailed areas first and wipe that back and then I will be adding it just um, kind of over the entire candlestick but just not as intense as I do the detailed areas. For the finishing touch, I just take some twine, wrap it around, and add a little bit of hot glue to secure it. And then I make a little tiny bow out of the same twine and attach that to the front with some hot glue. Then I just trim the ends of the twine, and that is it for this one. Now for the next three, I'm going to be using some of these antique looking papers that came from Amazon. And then I have a couple of old book pages and I want to tear these into small strips so that I can wrap them around the eggs. I'm using this stainless steel tear ruler that I got off of Amazon and I'm first tearing off the borders of the book pages so that I just have the words. So now I can start tearing my strips. This ruler works really well for this. It leaves a nice jagged edge on all of these strips. So now I'm tearing off the strips onto the other pages that I got that were just, you know, printed onto paper um, from Amazon. And these left a white edge because it was printed onto the paper instead of being like an authentic book page. So I will have to um, treat those edges with a Distress ink before I put them on the eggs. But here I'm just using the book pages and my Mod Podge to just apply these to these eggs in just a random fashion. There's no right or wrong. You just glue them on until the whole egg is covered. And now that I have all those strips on there, I'm applying a coat of Mod Podge to seal the egg. I had a couple of those little wood candlesticks left that I didn't use, so I just used that as a way to set my egg on there and let the Mod Podge dry. So now we're going to use the Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo to add some color to these the white edges that showed up when I tore this paper. I just have a sponge applicator. I'm dipping it onto the pad of ink and rubbing it around all the edges of all these strips of paper. Now, I did let this dry for a while because, um, you know, the permanent ink is good to go very quickly, and this stuff tends to not dry very quickly. And I noticed when I went to Mod Podge them on, it did bleed onto the egg. 
but that did not cause a problem. It just, you know, kind of got my fingers messy. Um, but I don't know how long you would have to let it dry before you could do this without that happening. But for this project, that wasn't an issue, and this is how it turned out. And now I'm just applying that final coat of Mod Podge to this egg. Now we're on to some embellishments. So I'm starting with jute twine, using my hot glue to help hold it in place as I wrap it around. Once I had it wrapped around, I secured it with hot glue, trimmed off that excess piece, and then I made a little tiny bow out of the same jute string, and I have a little tiny flower here to add, so I'm just going to apply both of those with some hot glue. Now for the next two, I wanted them to be just a little bit different, so I went ahead and did the twine again around the egg, but I left the ends kind of like sticking out instead of uh, just gluing it down and trimming them off. And I'm going to add this little green leaf as well as a paper flower with some hot glue. I do the same thing on the other egg, only I just reverse the direction of the leaf. I trim off the ends a little bit, and that's it for this one. So now we are on to the fabric rag ball type eggs. I'm cutting off the tip of a skewer so I have more of a blunt end. I have a styrofoam ball and I've cut my fabric into one and a half inch squares. I just poke a hole in the styrofoam egg and add a little drop of hot glue and then push the fabric in with my skewer. I found out probably halfway through this egg that it's just easier to poke the hole and then lay the little square of fabric over it and then shove it in instead of trying to wrap it around that skewer first. And it went a lot faster that way. But these are super simple. Um, kids and grandkids could do this. That's how it turned out. It's nice and fluffy. Um, but you just might want to use like school glue if little kids are doing it. So on this one, I chose to do drop cloth and then a ticking stripe fabric. And the drop cloth was, um, you know, a lot thicker. So it took up a little bit more space on this. So I used less of it than the thin fabric. But you just want to alternate back and forth until you get the coverage that you need and you have the color pattern that you like. And here's where I'm poking the hole, putting the glue in, and then just laying the fabric over that hole and shoving it in. It just goes a lot faster. And again, this is super simple, but it is time consuming because you have to put these pretty close together. So it just takes a lot of the repetition. And here's how the drop cloth and the ticking stripe one turned out. Now on to our crackle eggs. I'm using the Distress Crackle Paste for the first time. It, this one is translucent, so you can either add paint to it um, before you apply it, or you can paint it afterwards. I'm leaving it as is to apply it using a palette knife to try and spread this over my eggs somewhat evenly, not too thick, not too thin, just working with it until the entire egg is covered. Once that crackle is dry, 
I'm going in with my Distress Oxide Spray and Speckled Egg Rustic Wilderness and Seedless Preserves. Look at the crackle on these eggs. It turned out wonderful. So I give them a good shake and do a test spray onto a sheet of uh, paper towel. And then I spray my egg and then I use my mister to make it run a little bit down into all those cracks. I dab off any extra water on there and then I move on to the next color and add that one the same way. I spritz it on and add some water from my mister. Adding the water just helps all that ink kind of flow down into all those little cracks and it just gives it such a unique effect. I really love how these turned out. I do each egg a little differently. One has more of the green and pink and one has more of the, you know, the pink color and then one has more of the blue color. So they're all just a little bit different, but yet they're all the same style. And here they are ready to dry on their little styrofoam stand. Now they're dry and look at that. It's just gorgeous. Oh my gosh, all that crackle and all that color. So it's time for an embellishment. I'm going to be using these flowers. I thought they were paper flowers when I bought them, but they're actually, I don't know what they're made of. It's kind of like a polyester type fabric. So, I had a little bit of trouble getting them glued down because I thought I could use my tacky glue, but it seeped through that fabric, whatever this is made of, and so it was sticking to my fingers, and it, so then I got some saran wrap, um, like people use when they decoupage, and tried that, but it just seeped through onto the saran wrap. I mean, it was helpful. It did help me kind of get it pressed down a little bit. But ultimately, I had to go in and do some touch-up with hot glue around the edges because I just couldn't get the whole flower. There was two layers to the flowers, and I couldn't get them to glue down with just the tacky glue. So in the end, this turned out just great. Um, but it just wasn't something that I was expecting. And now that all my flowers are glued down, I'm going to go over the entire egg with a coat of Mod Podge to seal it. I wanted to fill in the holes left from the skewers on the bottom of the eggs, so I used my joint compound to just dab that on over those holes. I let that dry, and then I was able to put out some of that Distress ink onto a plate and just paint over the joint compound. Once I had these all painted up and it was dry, I could just seal it with a little bit of Mod Podge and these are done. For our final set of eggs, I'm going to be doing three different castings from my molds with air dry clay. 
This is one I got from Amazon. And with all my molds, I put cornstarch in first so that it will release easily. And here's how this one looks. I just need to clean up the edges with a paintbrush dipped in water to get in around all those little grooves on the perimeter of this casting. So now I can take my Gorilla Wood Glue and spread it on the back of the casting and apply it to my egg. I use gentle pressure to adhere this to the egg because I don't want to distort the image. And now I'm going to make this butterfly and of course some of his little legs <laughs> broke off. I put this in the freezer like I was told to so that that wouldn't happen and it did not work for me. But I was able to glue these back on. It was a little bit tedious but I was able to glue them back on when I glued it to the egg. And then the other casting I did was this one that's like a postage stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that one onto this egg. And so here's where I'm trying to do surgery and then reattach the legs and antenna that broke off. And it didn't turn out perfect, but you know, it wasn't really that bad. So don't, don't lose hope if you break a leg. It's time to paint these with a base coat of my white chalk paint and I'm adding some baking soda to it to give it a little texture. I'm not going to do any stippling or anything crazy like that. I just want it to have more body to it so that it fills in any little tiny gaps there might be between the castings and the eggs. And with that base coat dry, I'm going to apply chalk paint in the color Barely Pink. And now I'm going to use Dixie Bell Dixie Dirt in the color Ash for the first time. This is an experiment for me. So I'm taking my clear wax and applying it around the outer edges of all of my castings. And then I can take a brush and dip it into the Dixie dirt and then just tap it on into that wax. It will give an aged look around the edges of these castings. To add some age to the castings themselves, I'm using Rust-Oleum Chalked Smoked Glaze. Just brushing this over the entire casting and then wiping it back with a uh, baby wipe or you could just use a um, damp rag and it removes almost all of it. It just leaves a little bit down in the crevices. And so now I'm going to apply a coat of my clear wax over the entire egg, wipe that back, and then we will be going in with some white wax. And here we go with the white wax for that final touch. I'm using a toothpick here to kind of pick out the wax that is stuck in those really small grooves. I don't want that to cover up the antique glaze that I put in there. So I just pick that out with a toothpick 
and then wipe it back off with a cloth and now I'm applying the white wax on the back side of the egg and wiping that back and then we will buff it and they are all done. So now we can take a look at how everything turned out. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join me here on this channel. I get on here hoping to inspire people, but then find out that I'm getting inspired by you. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the next one.